hope you're having a good day today. Hopping on to do a quick live for the singles today. That's kind of the topic of our conversation. Give me a second while I'm getting set up here. Um, but we're talking about how to identify a counterfeit or a false spouse, someone that God does not want you to marry, okay? And the devil can be very deceptive and very tricky about this, which is why I'm hopping on to discuss this topic with you guys today because he's sneaky, right? If he was outright with us, a lot of the times we would catch him in this area of our lives. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to talk through things that apply to everybody today, um, different signs you can watch for, different things that are scriptural that the Bible talks about um, so that you can really kind of have in your mind things to think about um, for those of you guys who are singles and that are looking to um, potentially, you know, marry someone one day. Amen. So if this is kind of your um, thing that God has put on your heart that one day you're going to have a spouse, this is a good kind of a thing to tune into regardless of whether or not you have a significant other currently in your life. Um, can th because this can apply to future stuff. Amen. And so um, say, hey, let me know where you guys are hopping on from. Um, and I'm not going to wait too, too long before I hop into this because I don't want it to go super long. Um, but I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points um, for you guys today. And they're all backed up by a scripture verse. Um, I've actually got a lot of scripture I'm going to talk us through today just because I think that that is extremely important because you know what? The heart sometimes can be very deceptive, right? And we need a lot of scripture, a lot of foundational stuff to help us to know what the God report has to say about our situations. Amen. And God cares about this area of your life more than you could ever imagine ladies and gents, and he wants to prevent you from getting into hard situations. And I want to kind of do this as a disclaimer, and this is not to hate on anybody, um, but I do want to say that you've got to be very careful who you are getting advice from in this area of your life. Amen. You need to test the fruit. You know, there are a lot of married couples, current married couples who did this completely wrong. They were outside of God's timing. They did not obey God in this area of their life. And so, you know, not everyone who is giving you advice needs to be a good source. You need to check the fruit. You need to put yourself in the shoes of the people who you are getting advice from and go, okay, would I want to live the life that they're living? one day, basically. You know, how is the fruit on their marriage? Is their marriage constantly in a place of strife? Is their marriage something that doesn't have good fruit on it? You know, did they not wait on God's timing X, Y, Z? Because those are the exact types of people you don't need to be getting advice from. Because a lot of times their advice is not going to be godly advice, even if they mean well, ladies and gents. Amen. And so you need to watch the fruit. You need to look at the godly couples, amen, who did life correctly, who obeyed God, who waited on his timing, who asked God, you know, for advice over their marriage, who didn't just go pick on their own, but they waited for the one that God showed them. Amen. Those are the people that you need to fashion this area of your life after. And you need to be very aware of the fruit. Not all advice is good advice. Amen. You know, the Bible says that there's wisdom and a multitude of counselors, but when those counselors, quote unquote, go against what God is saying and what scripture is saying over your situation, you need to pick the God report over people's report. Amen. Um, and so all of that to say, I wanted to start off with that because I think that's extremely critical for context as we are hopping into this and as we are talking about this particular topic today is you need to be careful who you're getting advice from and you need to look at the fruit on these people's lives. And it's not to say they're going to be perfect. Perfect people don't exist, ladies and gents. And guess what? Your future spouse is not going to be perfect, okay? Just like you were not perfect, amen? Um, however, they're going to demonstrate good fruit, which is actually one of our points that we're going to get into a little bit later on. Um, um, and our topic of conversation, but I wanted to kind of talk you guys through this so that you can get just a straight up biblical perspective. And these points will apply to every single person who hops on um, to this live because they're rather generic, but they're going to help you to quote unquote, weed out a lot of the stuff that is not of the Lord. And we're going to talk about today how the enemy can kind of masquerade as an angel of light. The enemy can try to masquerade um, as looking like the God thing with it really not being the God thing in your life and how you have to use discernment in a lot of ways in this particular area of your life. And so, um, like I said, I'm not going to wait too long. Um, if you guys are hopping on, uh, part of the way through, you can rewatch the live, but I'm excited you guys are joining me today. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and hop into my number one point. So we're talking about seven different points for ways that you can easily identify a counterfeit spouse. 
Okay, counterfeit kingdom spouse, people call it different things, but someone who is not of the Lord in your life. Amen. And so the number one thing that I wanted to read you is starting off with a straight up scripture. Okay, so this is Proverbs 10, 22, and it says, the blessing of the Lord, in other words, blessings that come from God, right, makes one rich. And a lot of times when we think about that word rich, we think about wealthy, and it can apply to that sometimes, right? But I want you guys to think about this differently. Think about it making you rich in spirit. Think about it adding to your life in some way, shape, or form. Amen? Because not all blessings in our life are financial, and they can still add to our lives. They can still be a good thing, all right? So I'm I'm doing it this way and I'm really breaking down the teaching component of this so I can help you guys to see this. Okay, so the blessing of the Lord makes one rich. You could think about it saying in spirit and he addeth no sorrow with it. That's powerful. Ladies and gents, that one little phrase is extremely powerful. Listen to me, ladies and gents. When you are receiving a God blessing in your personal life, it's not to say it's going to be perfect because no person on earth is perfect, but it will come with no sorrow added with that blessing. Amen. It's going to be good for you. Amen. So one of the fruits that I see with a lot of people who are dealing with a counterfeit situation is there's a lot of sorrow involved in these situations, and that's not of God ladies and gents. And so the blessing of the Lord, in other words, blessings that come from God's heart, his character, the goodness of who he is over your life. Amen. They're going to make you rich in spirit. They're going to add something to your life. Amen. And they are going to add no sorrow with it. It's not going to bring sorrow into your life. Amen. And so, so many um, couples that I talk to who are dealing with a counterfeit situation in their life, they're just covered up in sorrow with situations where they don't understand it. There's confusion. There's all this stuff. And that's not of God, ladies and gents. You know, a God blessing is not going to bring sorrow with it. Okay, so that's the first point, all right? Moving right along, the second point is the blessings that are sent from God will come with his peace on that situation. Amen. Um, our scripture verse for this is Philippians 4, 7. It says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard, I love that, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. So the peace of God in our lives, when we experience his peace, when his peace is on a situation, we know that it comes from him a lot of the time and it acts as a guard. Cause how many of you guys know that scripture tells us that the heart can be deceitful? Amen. And I know that you guys have been there before. I've been there before too. When your heart gets caught up in something, sometimes it is very hard to see clearly in situations. So a lot of times what you can do is you can look for the peace of God. You know, when something is not of God, there will almost be this like nagging feeling feeling that you get a lot of the time where, you know, you'll see little pieces that don't add up or there'll kind of just be something that just kind of never goes away where it kind of just nags at you and you're like, something is not 110% correct on this. Amen. And so that's why this scripture is so important that the blessings that are sent from God will come with his peace. They're going to come with his confirmation. Amen. There's not going to be this back and forth. There's not going to be a confusion on it. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. And that means even your understanding. Amen. God gives us this peace as a guard for a reason because sometimes our understanding in itself is not enough. Ladies and gents, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. So it'll guard your thoughts. It'll guard your heart. Amen. And so if you're not experiencing the peace of God on a relationship, I can 110% guarantee you that it's not from God. You know, even relationships that go through hard times, you know, are going to have a peace on them. Amen. It's not to say that your relationship is never going to have, you know, um, harder seasons, you know, every single married couple who hops onto this could tell you that there will be times, you know, where sometimes you're going to go through hardship, but when you're in the will of God, there's a peace on it despite the hardships. Amen. And if you're not experiencing that peace, if there's this constant nagging feeling that something is not quite right and you can't put your finger on what it is, that is a big alarm bell from Holy Spirit trying to talk to you and say, this is not it. You need to take a step back. Do not move forward. Amen. Um, and so again, confusion is not of God in your personal life. Amen. And if you are constantly being yanked back and forth, if you're constantly confused about a situation, what it means, you know, the lack of peace is not of God in your personal life. Amen. So that's point number two. Okay. Um, let's hop on to point number three. And this one's really, really critical. The fruit on that person's life will line up with being 
good. Amen. The fruit on their life will be good. Again, this is not to say it's going to be a perfect person, but it is to say that overall their fruit is going to be good. You know, the Bible talks about in Matthew, um, that a good tree can only produce good fruit and a bad tree is ultimately going to produce bad fruit. You know, I think I've seen a lot of couples um, who have come to me over the years who, you know, they get very confused by this because a religious person, amen, ladies and gents, will have the surface looking pretty good, but the fruit will be rotten. Amen. A person who is really not a Christian, a lot of people will claim to be Christians if they know that it's going to get them the person that they want. Amen. Even if they have zero walk with God themselves. And so that's why it's so critical, ladies and gents, that you look at the fruit behind this person's lifestyle because a good tree can only bear good fruit and a bad tree is going to bear bad fruit. And so you've got to test the fruit. Are their actions aligning with their words and what they're saying? Hello, this is huge. A lot of people will say one Thing, but their actions will tell you a completely different story. That's a fruit problem, ladies and gents. It will show you that the fruit over that situation is off and it is not of the Lord in your personal life. Amen. And I've heard a lot of people give arguments and say, oh, well, you know, it's just not the right timing. It's the right person, but it's not the right timing. Listen to me, ladies and gents. I think that we get too caught up in this part. Amen. God is a big enough God that he is able to lead you in the right direction. Amen. So even if it is the right person at the wrong time, if it's not the right person right then in that moment, you need to let them go and say, God, I trust that you're big enough to introduce this person to me down the line in my life if it's supposed to be. But if it's not supposed to be, I can completely let this go. I completely surrender this to you. And, you know, I need to move forward because if we keep hanging on to things that we know are not of God in the moment, it can set you up to get into years of being trapped in situations that are not God's will for your life. Years of bringing sorrow and heartache to you. And this is how the devil gets so many people. And listen to me, ladies and gents, it is not your job to change someone. Okay. I know I talk to you guys about this all the time, but you are not God. And so if you are staring at a situation, where the fruit is bad, that person is not in a good place. It is not your job to hang in there and to go, oh, well, I'll just change them. You know, I can work with this, but I'll try to change them. That's not your job, ladies and gents. That job belongs to God and God alone. You can pray for that person. You can support that person. But if there are red flags, you know, that are going on in that person's lifestyle, you need to run, not just walk away from that situation. Don't get in the habit of collecting red flags in your personal life. And definitely don't wait around on a situation where you're waiting for someone to change, where you're waiting for something, you know, because when God sends it into your life, his timing's gonna be right. It's gonna be good for you, ladies and gents. And he is big enough in that area of your life to guard you and to guide you in the way that you should go with this, ladies and gents. So again, point number three is the fruit will line up with being good in that moment. Amen. In that moment, you know, when God intends for you to meet your future spouse, the fruit's going to be good. Amen. And so quit holding on to situations that, you know, have bad fruit. 99.9% .9 of the time that is the devil and not God over your life. Amen. Because a good tree produces only good fruit and a bad tree, the Bible tells us, produces bad fruit. Okay. So you've got to look at the fruit on their life, not just what they're saying. They could say that there's some great scripture. I don't care if their Facebook page has 10,000 scripture verses on it. If their lifestyle is telling you a different story, you need to say that's a big red flag and you need to move forward in your personal life. You know, if they are not interested, interested in you. Amen. You know, for some of you guys, you know, you, you've got to understand that, you know, God does not force situations. Amen. And so a lot of you guys are hanging on to situations that are not of the Lord. He has told you to let go of that thing. He has told you, you know, this is not the God thing that I have for your life. It's a good thing. They're a good thing. But remember, that's what got Eve in trouble in the garden. Amen. She pursued and went after a good thing that wasn't the God thing for her personal life. Remember, the fruit was described as being good and pleasing to the eye. Go look it up. It's in Genesis. Amen. The fruit that she was not supposed to eat, but because she picked something that looks good in her own flesh, rather than picking the God thing for her life, it severely messed her up and got her into trouble. Ladies and gents, and it's the same way in our personal lives. When we go after stuff just because it is an option rather than being the God option in your life, God will let you do that. Even scripture tells you that God will let you do that. Amen. He says, if you're just going to struggle with lust and if you're going to have a rough time and if you cannot control yourself, go get married. 
made, but that was never intended to be his best for you. Ladies and gents, God has someone that is for you that he wants to bring into your personal life that's going to be a good gift that he has you know, called you to be with. And if you wait for his best in this area of your life, it's gonna be well worth it, ladies and gents. Amen, it's one of the most important areas because who you marry can derail the call of God on your life if it's the wrong one, or it can draw you closer to the heart of the Father and cause you to walk in purpose in a greater way if it's the right one, ladies and gents. And so this is really, really, really critical, okay? So you cannot separate God's words, quote unquote, his confirmations. We're gonna dig into this a lot more in a second, so work with me. Um, you cannot separate that from his peace, okay? Because God is called the Prince of Peace. I wanna talk to you guys about deception a little bit and how the enemy deceives Christians in this area of their life, okay? False confirmations in your life. Let's say that you get a dream, you get a vision, you get, you know, some kind of thing that you think is a confirmation from God on who you think your future spouse is. Even if it looks like you have gotten confirmation in the, these areas, if it lacks his peace on a thing, if it lacks good fruit, if it lacks these other areas, it's still not of God. I have seen so many Christians get tripped up in this particular area because they would see legit signs quote unquote, of different things. And they would go, oh, that must be God. I had a dream about that person. Oh, that must be God. You know, I, I thought that I got confirmation in X, Y, Z way. But the Bible says that we are supposed to test the spirits. Amen. I'm hopping a little ahead of myself here, but it's, it's going to work this way. Okay. Um, and so what's so important, ladies and gents, is that you understand that the devil can masquerade as an angel of light in your life. And he purposefully tries to do this to get you off track because he knows if he can get you to marry the wrong person, if he can get you off track in this area of your life, he can cause so much collateral damage. A lot of you guys have lived this. Amen. In your personal life, and he can cause heartache and pain. He can send delay into your life for years upon time because you're holding on to wilderness mindsets and people and things that are not of him in your personal life, and it keeps you held back because you're unwilling to be open to the things that he does have for your life. You see how he can get you in this pattern, ladies and gents. And so, even if you think that you've heard confirmations from God, let's say that you've got a dream, a vision, let's say that you think that you know who that person is, if it lacks his peace, Amen. That's not of God. If it lacks good fruit, that's not of God, ladies and gents. Amen. Um, you know, even the devil can send you dreams and divine quote unquote coincidences into your personal life via witchcraft and familiar spirits. Can we talk today? This is why the Bible says that we have to test the spirits. You know, sometimes you can get a dream that's from your flesh. Ladies and gents, you can get dreams from the devil, you can get dreams from your flesh, and then you can get God dreams and interpretations, which is why it's so important to test the fruit. And God will confirm this for you in multiple ways if it's the one that you're supposed to be with. Amen. And so you've got to be very careful and discerning because the angel will masquerade himself to be an angel of light in your life. And you will think that you've gotten confirmations from God, but there will always be something that is just slightly off if that thing is not of him in your personal life. The devil loves to play this game with Christians and it can really get you off track. Okay, so give me a second. I'm going to get my Bible opened up to our first scripture here. Um, I've got several on this one that I wanted to read you for this point on false confirmations. Okay, um, so I want to read you guys Zechariah 10 2, and it says, The idols speak deceit, diviners see visions that lie, they tell dreams that are false, they give comfort in vain. Therefore, the people wander like sheep oppressed for a lack of shepherd. Now, if you look at the overall context of the scripture, it's not talking about what we're talking about today. But what I do want you to get out of this is what we learn from this, it says diviners see visions that lie, they tell dreams that are false, they give comfort in vain. So diviners represents a spirit of divination in your life, okay? And we know that that is not of God, that's witchcraft, right? I've talked to you guys about this before. And so we learn from the Bible here that you can get false visions and false dreams, amen, that are not from the Lord, amen. And so this is why you need to test the fruit. It says they tell dreams that are false. They give comfort in vain, okay? So a, a dream that is from the devil is not gonna have good fruit. It'll appeal to your flesh more than glorifying God, you know, X, Y, Z. And so that's why you need to look at the full context of what God is trying to show you with this stuff. And it is so critical to test the fruit, amen. So let's keep going. Um, 1 John 4, 1 is the next one that I want to hop to. If you guys are in your Bibles, let's see. 1 John 4, 1. Okay. 
This one says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Um, and so here's the deal. You know, and it goes on further to talk about how the spirit of Antichrist is running rampant through the earth, and it definitely is now more than ever, right? Um, but what I want you to know is you've got to, the Bible, it tells us as a command, you need to test the spirits when it comes to this stuff. Because just because you're hearing something doesn't mean that it's coming from God sometimes, ladies and gents. Um, again, it could come through a divining spirit, a familiar spirit trying to speak into your life and operate through a person that was sent to derail your destiny. You've got to be very careful, ladies and gents. It says, test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Amen. And so you can receive false prophecy, quote unquote, that the devil tries to speak into your life that can really get you off track, which is why even if you've had a dream, and even if you've had a vision, if, even if you feel like you've gotten confirmation on a thing, if God's peace isn't on it, if there isn't good fruit, if it's stealing, killing, and destroying from your life, that thing did not come from God, ladies and gents. Period. End of story. Have a nice day. If it's stealing, killing, or destroying from your life, if you have more peace being away from that person than you do being with that person, that is not of God. They may have some admirable, admirable qualities. Usually counterfeits do. Amen. It's not to say that they're going to outright, you know, be against God a lot of times. Sometimes that's the case. But again, the devil is sneaky with us, ladies and gents. He doesn't, you know, if he came in in a very guns blazing, blaring way, we would catch him a lot of the time. So he's subtle in the way that he comes into our lives. And so you've got to be very, very careful to watch for this and to test the spirits. Amen. Okay, moving forward. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, And I got to find it. Okay. All right. This is that scripture that I was just talking to you guys about. Um, it says, and no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Okay. And so that's the other thing that I want you guys to consider with the importance of testing the spirit. Satan will look like the God thing a lot of the time, but there will always be one or two things that are slightly off with it, ladies and gents. Amen. And so that's why it's so important that you are looking at the full picture. You're looking at all of what scripture has to say when it comes to your kingdom spouse. And sometimes I know your flesh can want a person or a thing so bad, you know, you've got to be willing to put it to the scripture test, ladies and gents, put that thing to the scripture test that you were interested in or that you feel like God has put on your heart. And you've got to be willing to bring it to the Lord because your heart can lie to you. Your flesh can lie to you, ladies and gents. And the counterfeit will often mimic the real deal in a lot of different ways, which is why you've got to use discernment, ladies and gents, okay? Um, which is hopping me actually into my next point. So this is point number five, okay? And let me also say this. A counterfeit to you may not necessarily be a bad person. It may be a great gift for someone else, amen? But if it's your counterfeit, it's still going to cause damage to you and your personal life, amen? Okay, goes back to the whole good or God thing in the garden. We've already gone through that, but I'm saying that to put it out there, okay? All right, here's the next thing. Counterfeits will mirror the real deal in a lot of ways, but not everything will be 100% lined up. You know, maybe you feel like you've gotten confirmation in some ways, but there's a lack of peace. Maybe you feel like, you know, you've gotten certain confirmations in different areas, but the fruit on their life isn't good. Ladies and gents, if there's one of these areas that is off, that's that should be causing an alarm bell in your spirit, and you should be going, okay, let me think about this. Let me take a step back. Let me pray about this situation before I move forward on this thing. Amen. Because God wants to show you this stuff, ladies and gents, and he has good gifts and he wants the very best for you in this area of your life. Amen. Wanted to read you James 1 17. It says every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. Amen. So God's gifts that he brings into your life are going to be good and perfect. Amen. The fruit's going to line up. It's going to bring a peace into your life. It's going to be good for you. Ladies and gents, it's not to say that person's going to be perfect. Okay. But it is to say they're going to be a good gift for you. It's going to be a perfect gift from the father for you, ladies and gents. Amen. And you know, that involves things like even the following. Okay. Okay. 
you're going to be attracted to your future spouse. Amen. If you're not attracted to a person, that's a pretty good sign that that's probably not from God. Amen. Because God says he sends good and perfect gifts. Now, that may not mean that you're getting a supermodel, okay? It may mean that you're getting, you know, um, a, a normal person kind of a thing. But you're going to be attracted to your future spouse because God sends good and perfect gifts to you. Amen. And so even those little practical things are going to line up, ladies and gents. You know, God's not going to have you wait and surrender your er, this area of your life to him just for him to give you a bad gift. That's not the heart of our father. Amen. He loves you and he wants what's best for you in this area of your life. Okay. And you're going to be so attracted to this person's walk with God. Amen. It's going to be something that pulls you closer to the heart of God. And you know, the reason for that is, and that's, this only works if you're chasing after God with every ounce of your being. Amen. If you're putting him first in your life. So often people pray for a godly spouse. And I know you guys hear me talk about this all the time. But they will pray, 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 and go, God, send me a godly person. But they're not living it themselves, ladies and gents. you got to live it and get closer to God first if you want to receive his very best in this area of your life. Amen? Okay. So James 1.17, every good and perfect gift comes down from above. Okay, point number six, all right? A God gift will not distract you from who God is and what he's doing in your personal life. Amen. It will draw you closer to the heart of God. The enemy brings people into our lives a lot of times in the form of a distraction. Suddenly you will realize you have no time for God time anymore. Suddenly your passion for God will begin to kind of, you know, dimmer down and kind of just become a flicker when it was a full fire before in your personal life. Amen. Suddenly they will distract you and they'll get you involved in going down a path into things and situations and habits that are just not very godly in your personal life. That's a good sign that this person probably was not sent from God. Amen. Because a God gift is going to draw you closer to his heart. Matthew 6, says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things will be added unto you. Why on earth, if it is a command from scripture to seek God first in everything that you do, would God send you a gift that's going to pull you farther away from his heart? He's not going to do that, ladies and gents. So the person that God has for you is going to draw you closer to his love, is going to encourage you in your walk with God, not draw you farther away from him or be a distraction to you in your personal life. You got to test the fruit, ladies and gents. Okay. All right. Let me read you the seventh point. Okay. Um, and we'll get it wrapped up here, but I have several scriptures associated with this point. Okay. God gifts will not make you feel like you're stuck or you are in a place of bondage when they come into your life. Amen. I've talked to so many people who think that it's the God gift for their life, but it's keeping them stuck. It's keeping them in a place of bondage to hold on to these people, these circumstances or these things. And that is not of God ladies and gents. Okay. Let me read you some scripture. I want you guys to hear this. This is second Corinthians three seventeen. It says, now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is. In other words, what God's presence is on, what his hand is on ladies and gents, it brings, or there is freedom in your life. So in other words, whatever God is bringing into your life, whatever his hand is on in your personal life, it's going to bring freedom into your life. You're going to feel free. You're not going to feel like you're in bondage. You're not going to feel stuck. You're not going to feel like you're just constantly in this place of war in your personal life. You're not going to feel constant confusion. Like you're in this tug of rope game with Satan and with God. And is this him or is this not him? Ladies and gents, that's not of God where the spirit of the Lord is. In other words, what God's hand is on in your personal life. It's going to bring a place of freedom. Them. Amen. All righty. Um, John 8 32 says, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Okay. So, you know, the truth is if it's a good gift that God is bringing into your life, it's going to bring freedom into your life. It's not going to bring bondage. It's not going to bring all this chaos, you know, all of this stuff into your personal life. Amen. So this is really important. So in other words, God's truth or his facts over your life are going to bring freedom to you. It's going to bring, you know, liberty from the place of bondage. It's going to feel like it's just um, a good thing and that it's really natural. Amen, ladies and gents. And it's not say you're never going to go through storms or have anything hard, but a relationship that is sent from God, again, it's going to have his peace on it, ladies and gents. So I'm going to leave it there because I don't want to be on super long. I was on forever on the last live that I did with you guys. So I'm trying to contain myself and keep it a little bit shorter, but I hope that helps. And if you guys have found yourself in a situation where one of these th points that I just made kind of triggers an alarm bell in your spirit with somebody that you've been talking to or thinking about or whatever, I would encourage you guys put things on pause 
for a second, bring it to God. You don't even have to announce it to everybody. You don't have to announce it to that person that you've been talking to quite yet. You don't have to announce it, you know, to family or friends or whatever. Just bring it to God kind of behind the scenes and say, you know what, God, um, I want your perspective on this. Before I move forward, before this goes any further, what do you have to say about my situation here? Um, and God will definitely talk to you guys about this. And I know it's hard to break off stuff with people that maybe you've been talking to for years or maybe your flesh really likes or whatever the case is. I know it is, ladies and gents. But God doesn't ask you to do this stuff to torture you. He does it because he has a good gift that he's trying to bring into your life. And the longer you hold on to the wrong thing, the more you are preventing the right thing from being able to come into your personal life. Amen. Don't fall for the counterfeit. Hope you guys have a great day and I'll chat with you soon.